This is Steve Herter's Bastard Midge, a pattern you should seriously consider as we enter winter midge season. It's one of those flies that looks more difficult to tie than it really is. For a hook, I'm going to use a Dairiki number 320 uniform gap dry fly hook in size 20. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. For thread, I've loaded a bobbin with a spool of red Vivis Tenot. Get your thread started on the hook shank, leaving a two eye length space behind the eye. Take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps all the way back to the start of the hook bend. Mallard flank is traditionally used to form the trailing shuck, but here I'm going to go with wood duck, as I like the finer darker markings and the more even tips. Strip a dozen or so fibers free from the stem, and while keeping their tips aligned, get hold of them in the fingertips of your right hand. Measure to form a shuck approximately a hook shank in length and transfer that measurement rearward to the tie-in point. Pass the fibers to the fingertips of your left hand and use a pinch wrap to secure them to the top of the hook shank. Keep taking thread wraps forward, binding the fibers to the top of the shank as you go. At about the halfway point on the hook shank, lift the butt ends of the fibers up and snip them off close. Keep taking thread wraps up to your initial tie-in point. Bleached elk or deer hair is used to form the back and the antennae of the fly. Snip only 8 to 10 hairs free from the hide, then strip out all the fine under fur. Although not essential, I do like to stack the hair in my hair stacker to make sure the tips are completely aligned. Remove the hair from the stacker with your right hand and then pass the hair to the fingertips of your left. You want the antennae to be a little more than a half a hook shank in length. With the hair measured, use a pinch wrap to secure it to the top of the hook shank and take wraps forward, leaving just a small amount of space behind the hook eye. Begin taking wraps rearward, pulling up on the hair at an angle as you go. This will ensure touching thread wraps and help keep the hair directly on top of the hook shank. Continue taking wraps all the way back to the start of the hook bend, then take wraps forward to the initial tie-in point. Pull the deer hair forward and take a few wraps of tying thread to hold it down. If you break a hair or two here like I did, don't worry, it can be snipped off later. Lift the butt ends up to vertical and snip them off close. Then cover the ends with wraps of tying thread back to the initial tie-in point. Again, snip any broken hairs off if you need to. Grizzly midge sized saddle hackle is used to hackle the fly. Strip an eighth inch or so of the lower fibers free from the stem. With the shiny side of the feather facing you, lay the bare stem against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps forward to secure it. End with your tying thread a little ways behind the hook eye. Get hold of the hackle feather and start making touching wraps with it forward up the shank. Three to four turns should be plenty. When you get to your tying thread, use it to anchor the hackle stem, then reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess off close. Lift the antennae up and back and take a few thread wraps beneath them. This will allow you to do a three or four turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. Preen the antennae back down and your herder's bastard midge is ready to fish. I know a lot of people who swear by this pattern, both out west and here in the east. Absolutely give it a try.